everyone. I hope everyone is having a great day, whether you are five hours away or a day away. Remember, I love you. Okay. I just want to make this quick for everyone who has these issues because I feel like there's not enough YouTube videos where it's someone that's just candidly talking about problems they have with co-workers or problems that they have with bosses or supervisors or adults just having issues that you would think that would be over by the time you graduate from college or even high school but apparently we still have immature adults who do not know how to communicate their problems with you if you have a problem with a co-worker you approach that co-worker in a respectful manner and not in an accusatory manner as if they ain't doing everything correctly when you're not even doing everything that you should i really cannot stand when it's always the worst co-worker you have to deal with that has something to say to you they don't say shit to you, but then they want to call you out in a group chat during the most inappropriate time. If I am going to lunch, if I am on a break or if I am at home, please don't send me no message like, well, I don't appreciate that you left me to do all this work and you got to do this and blah, blah, blah. First of all, I asked you if you needed help. You said no, that you're fine. So I went ahead and left, did what I needed to do because I have other things I need to do. Why do I get a message on my way home in a car talking about, well, I don't appreciate the fact that I was left alone and I had to do all this work. And I mean, I didn't mind, but I would appreciate if I get some help. Please don't leave me here by myself. I told you I had somewhere to go, but... If you need me to stay, I can stay longer because I saw that you needed extra help. I said, I have somewhere to go. And I asked you, is it okay or do you need me to stay? That was when you should have said, you know what, Kara? I know you have somewhere to go, but can you say a little bit? We're kind of tight. We're short staffed. Fine. Why do you say, okay, sure. And then I hear you talking to another coworker behind my back, snickering, laughing, and then looking at me and then waiting for me to go. And then I get a message in a group chat about how somebody didn't do their work. And then when I am big enough to apologize, then another boss has the nerve to say, well, that was disrespectful because I asked you if you had to leave and you said no. Okay. But then something came up and I said, I'm going to leave. And I asked that person if it was okay. And he said, well, that's unacceptable. Why well, I apologize. I don't need you to call me out. You're an asshole and you're manipulative and you're trying to get me in trouble. Stop trying to put me in situations where it makes me look bad because I'm always considerate to other people's needs. Even though they're not considerate to my needs, I ask them if it's okay or if they need help. They say, no, I got it free from here or no, that's okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And you're so persistent and taking over my task and then you want to take credit for it no no that, that's not okay that is not okay especially when i am disabled and i am the only black co-worker there so i already feel like i don't belong or i don't fit in when i am autistic and i am black i don't feel like i fit in when i am around a bunch of presumably neurotypical holistic white people or non-black people, or even a light-skinned mixed person, you know, yes, we're both black, but there's a, there's an obvious difference between me, a black person, you know, who's not mixed with anything, and a black person who's obviously mixed with something, you know, because you can kind of tell by phenotype, you know, if someone is mixed or not, or people often judge by hair type, and that should not happen in the black community, but it does. I'm not saying that you can always tell what somebody's ethnicity is just by how they look, but typically people are going to look like the ethnicity that they come from, okay? You know, I don't like that whole thing. Well, you can look like anything and be fooled. Okay, we know that, but we all know that in the real world, people judge each other just by their hair type or phenotype and they, they can usually tell where you come from by your features so i'm already not fitting in and then i'm getting called out for something that's really not my control or every mistake that i make you got to point it out we all make mistakes it's okay to point it out but you don't have to make it like we're doing it on purpose because we're doing the best that we can we're under the same pressure as you are so i would appreciate it if you would treat me with more respect and be more supportive when i am under such high stress as it is I'm just trying to make money 
as cliche as it sounds, and pay rent and get an apartment and to support myself and to eventually have a family. That's all I care about. I don't care about anybody else. I don't care about making friends. I don't care about fitting in clicks. All I care about is just making money and being able to do fun stuff like traveling or buying clothes or doing my hair, just little shit like that. But then I can't because people are just so unsupportive and so inconsiderate. And all I do is try to make people happy and I care about what people think. And that's the problem. I care so much about what people think that I have to realize that people don't care about me and you have to take care of yourself and to be a hundred percent aware that other people are going to try to sabotage and manipulate you. The other day, I get a message talking about, I don't appreciate being left alone with all these kids. Well, you leave me alone other times before. So why do you feel the need to call me out? And I said, I said, I said, that's happened to me countless times where I had to be with 10 or 20 kids. And I managed, even though I got criticized and I was told, well, why do you do this? Why do you do that? I manage because I try the best that I can because half the time when I am being scolded or reprimanded by a co-worker or my boss, it is because somebody put me in a situation where I could not handle and then I'm the one that's looking bad because no one is there to help me and I'm the one that's looking responsible and I'm like, what is going on? There's 20 kids and half of them are severely disabled. I'm going to lunch. I'm walking the hallway. I see three or five disabled kids standing out in the hallway by themselves and I'm on my lunch break so I'm pretty much clocked out but I have to make sure that they are getting to class I have to make sure that they are getting the things that they need from their locker because it is going to look bad on me because I'm going to have my supervisor say well you're not doing this correctly I'm going to have to suspend you and terminate you and I can't afford to be terminated I cannot afford to be terminated I'm sorry and I know most people will say well why would you want to be with a job where it's so stressful or people don't want you there because I need the money and I'm not even making that much to even pay rent but I need that money to help me start out I need to save up money to go to California this spring. So that's the only reason why I am still here. And because I love my job technically and I love working with kids. And that's the only reason why I work at these jobs. But right now I feel like childcare or education is something that is really not for me. And not because I don't care about children or disabled people, but just because of the fact that there's so much shadiness that goes on. And a lot of times I feel like it's not for me because I have too much heart. I care so much about other people. People and I realize that people in this position may not feel the same way and there's a lot of biases in industries like this or fields where people treat children or even adults like they don't matter or they're not important I've made mistakes yeah no you shouldn't be on your phone and you should have your attention on the children 100% I understand there is responsibilities that I was not prepared for and I had no idea and I had to have it beaten into my head hey you need to do this or you won't have a job yes I'm going to take ownership for the fact that I had my phone out and I was looking at things that you know I wasn't supposed to do at inappropriate times and that stopped I took responsibility for coming in late every single day because I was under depression that since we weren't clocked in until 7 30 I really didn't have to be there at 7 because that's a weird ass time to say be there at 7 and you're not really clocked in until 7 30 but I and the whole thing is is because well we may have meetings or we just want to sit and talk so you want me there for 30 minutes of no paid time just to make friends with you okay I guess but I don't think that's necessary and it's not like I don't want to make friends but I, it's just so much stress going on and then people say, well, I saw you on your phone and I don't think that you're able to comprehend information. What makes you think I can't comprehend information? Just because I'm on my phone during a training session does not mean that I'm not processing what you are saying. I can just look at something and get it. It just depends on what it is. If it's a math problem, I'm probably not going to get it. But if it's like reading or history or something where you are taking in information it's semantic information yeah i'm gonna get it i don't i not okay maybe you shouldn't be on your phone maybe you shouldn't be leaving but we don't understand i'm autistic i have adhd i have a short attention span sometimes i need things to stem i have to get up i have to go to the restroom i i have to if i get bored then i'm i'm going to have an overreaction you know I have my phone I may want to look at something real quick and then put it down because I need certain things to just keep me calm 
people don't understand that people use cell phones as stemming and it's pretty ableist to tell people oh put your cell phone up or do this and that or you shouldn't be standing up or you shouldn't be going to the bathroom every hour or so because you don't understand why somebody may need certain stimuli to help them concentrate you don't understand that and i feel like some of the things that you're trying to tell me not to do violates the disability rights act i mean i get sick often i was sick last week I had to go to the bathroom yesterday because I was on my period and I had bad cramps and I was going to shit on myself and bleed everywhere if I didn't go to the bathroom. And it's like she had an issue with that and I already told her I'm probably not going to get off the toilet anytime soon because I have to use the restroom. I have to go. You don't understand. Don't tell. And again, I guess because we're so short staffed that we need everybody to do this and that. But we make mistakes. To, please do not call me out on mistakes that you make yourself. Okay? And that's all I have to say for now because I don't want to take too long. But if you have an issue with your coworker, you have an issue with your supervisor, your boss, please communicate that with them. And don't wait till that person leaves and then text them about it because that's very cowardly and that's very manipulative. All right. I just want everyone to stay blessed and to have a happy 2020.